So Peter's the founder of the Eureka Building and Eureka Hub, which is one of the largest tech campuses in really all of California. And it's a three-acre event, office, and creative campus that many of our folks here in the audience and in the community have been able to enjoy over the number of years that it's been open. It's now been open for about six years. And Peter's vision was to support the startup community here with Eureka, and it has. Uh, we were just talking uh, Eureka Fest, which has been an annual event that they put on there, has been a great local annual celebration of entrepreneurship. And frankly, it's one of those can't miss events that we have here in Orange County every year. And I think one of the few, um, and we need more of those, but they've really blazed the trail. We'll He's, save the date, May 1st and 2nd, 2020. There you go, <laughs> May 1st and 2nd, 2020. So Peter's also the president of Ergo Holdings, which is an investment group focused on property, technology, workspaces, and diversified investments. And they're making those both in the US and in Canada. He's also an honorary professor uh, as someone who has taught uh, at the college level a few times. I greatly appreciate that. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit about that today. He's a venture capitalist and he's a real estate investor. And he started out at one of the few local venture funds here, uh, Sale Venture Partners, where he quickly rose through the ranks uh, in the few years that he was there. He's been a fast mover for a long time. He's won awards like the Power 30 Under 30, the Greek 40 Under 40, He's built companies and he's built a successful investment firm. He has strong ties and experience here, which is why uh, when he was traveling back here for the holidays, I had to grab him for a few minutes to talk to us. And he's also spending considerable time in another global city, Toronto. And that's a key thing I wanted to, to talk about today is what are the similarities? What are the real differences? What can we learn here in Orange County about what we can do better? Peter, it's great to have you here today. Oh, it's great to be here. So that was a, that was one of the best introductions I think I've ever received. <laughs> hey, you know, if, that, if that's all I can do, I'll, I'll feel like we've accomplished a lot. So let's get to the starting line. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about Eureka, but, you know, tell the audience kind of how you came to start that and, you know, what, what drove you to that spot? Sure. Um, so Eureka was, was really supposed to be a passion project. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned I was at a VC that was here based locally. It started in Costa Mesa, moved to Irvine. Um, and I just remember at the time, I think our portfolio of companies, I think we only had one company from California. And I don't remember, it wasn't even from Southern California. And so when I left and we started um, Ergo Capital doing the venture investments, and uh, I, I really wanted to create like this physical resource to help build a community. Because I think the biggest complaint I used to get from all of my friends who were entrepreneurs in Orange County was that they were driving up to LA from time to time, mm -hmm. or, and mm -hmm. it was because there was no um, gravitational pull. And that never made sense to me. You have huge companies here, right? Yes. You've got the headquarters of everything from uh, Edwards Life Science on one side to Blizzard on the other. That's right. And you had these, these, these wonderful resources that already existed, like, like Octane, which had been active mm -hmm. in the market and hosted these incredible conferences that really brought people from around the world to Orange County. Um, and so Eureka was meant to be like, I didn't want to repeat that. I wanted to find companies that we could invest and also deal with locally. Mm -hmm. And um, I also never understood how you go to some small cities around the world, which I would travel to, like Halifax, and they would have these things. But Orange County with four and a half million people and I don't know how many billionaires. Yes. And, and it was just always uh, it was something that we wanted to change in the marketplace. Absolutely. So you've now been at it for six years. I mean, compared to how you originally thought about it, yeah. um, you know, how is it, how has it gone in your mind? I mean, you, you were mentioning, you know, the types of companies you had big corporates with satellite offices, you've had really fast growing companies. I mean, how is it matched with what you originally thought? Maybe we'll start with that. You know, uh, as you, with, with any company, right, any project you start, you get to a certain point where you had your vision and then you had where you actually are. And it's just like, yes. I feel like it's just, we, we never had to do any pivots in the, the true sense of the firm, but we had minor course corrections all along the way because you had um, different demands, different growth, different mm -hmm. needs. And it was funny when we started, like I think we were like one of maybe three spaces, co-working spaces mm -hmm. in the whole county. Mm -hmm. um, and none were, 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 were on this scale. And now when you look around where we are, where we're based in, uh, in Irvine, you've got like all the different uh, names that you know, like WeWork, Industrious, and all these different companies uh -huh. that have, have built up those, those pieces of it. But um, what's been great 
and I, I'm very happy to see is a lot of the companies that now call Eureka home who are large, like 100 plus employees, 200 plus employees, um, they're Orange County companies. It's not, it's not like we, we convinced the Silicon, like when we first started, we convinced the Silicon Valley company to move to Orange County for any number of reasons, and they put their headquarters in Eureka. But now you actually have companies like Smart Home and Insteon that have called this their home, made this their headquarters because mm -hmm. they understand the value of Orange County and they plug in with it. So what, what has been the, the thing that maybe hasn't gone as planned? Um, you know, have you, do you feel like there's been an amplification of the startup community or more capital that's, that's come in because of Eureka? Um, I, I mean, I can, I can point to examples of companies that were in Eureka that um, managed to take that next step up forward mm -hmm. or get plugged in with different uh, capital or customers because they were there. Yeah. Um, but when you ask me, like, what didn't go to plan, I can tell you uh, the first thing that comes to mind is actually Eureka Fest. Mm. So Eureka Fest came about because we were working with all the different organizations in the community mm -hmm. um, to try and create an OC tech event. Yes. Like it was like we wanted to create OC startups, or I think we were calling it I, at the time Silicon Coast. I don't remember what it was, mm -hmm. but we spent probably six months working, uh, working on a roundtable um, with 20 plus groups. And after that six months, um, the group that was leading the talk said to us, you know what, we're not going to do an event anymore. We're just going to do an events calendar because it was before meets up, mm -hmm. meet up, right? Yes. And I remember getting the news because uh, Taylor, who uh, run, who's the director at Eureka, she was in the meeting and she told me, like, we're not doing the events anymore. And she called me and I said, screw it, let's just do it. And so mm -hmm. in 45 days, we planned, announced, hosted uh, the first ever Eureka Fest, mm -hmm. had 600 people show up, which we were, we were expecting like 100, maybe two. And got written up in Bloomberg, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Forbes, Yahoo Finance, all these different things. And that's when kind of another Eureka moment happened for us, which okay. was, oh, Orange County is ready for this. Yes. They really want to, like the people here um, are ready for us to, to build this to the next level. And now we're going in our sixth year for Eureka Fest and we have Techtoberfest. We have Tech the Halls, which just happened and uh, Eureka Summer Nights. That's awesome. And, and I think a great, you know, it's, it's sort of a great testament to having the belief and, and going forward with it and saying, hey, we're going to do it. Even if only 50 or 100 people show up, yeah. we're, we're, we're still going to serve that group well. Mm -hmm. And I think when you see that there's a demand like that, then it's, okay, where do we, where do we take it from here? And, you know, I appreciate the, the fact that, you know, hey, let's try to be inclusive. Let's try to allow others um, and, and I do think there's a lot that we can build upon as a community here. So, I mean, as you think ahead, what, what do you think we should be thinking about for, you know, the next couple of years? You know, can we envision maybe we outgrow your, your campus and we have to move it to the Orange County Fairgrounds or something? Yeah. Like, is there, a, is there a, you know, a next level version of this? It's funny you say that because we've, we've toured that space too um, for that purpose. You know, one, one of the things that no matter where you are in the world, you kind of get this, sometimes you get this, this mentality of thinking um, local, right? And you're, you're very localized in terms of uh, when you think of how do we put Orange County on the map because uh, with related, relation to LA and San Diego. Well, that was important five years ago. Mm -hmm. now, it's, now it's like how is Orange County seen globally? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we had attendees from 15, over 15 countries this year. Who came down and they didn't they, people know what Irvine is they've heard of the companies that are here they've heard of the the, the businesses that are growing here they, they know it's a big tech center mm -hmm. and um, LA loves to take credit for it I mean they, how many how many people have been up to LA for an investor summit or tech summit and like look at all the great companies that are coming out of LA and like I remember one year I was looking at it they had ten companies that were billion dollar unicorns and six of them were from Orange County at the time. <laughs> and I was just like what is this yeah. like they, they're just love taking credit for it um, because they, it, it's it's really got its own we, we have our own uh, center and our own gravity and our own um, unique value add that we offer and uh, for anyone who's been up to Palo Alto, I always look at you know driving around Orange County. There's a lot of similarities. It's just nicer here. Yeah. That, that's literally <laughs> same, been the tagline. Same, same yeah. kind of buildings, same kind yeah. of companies. It's just nicer here. We we literally have been saying here at, at OC4 that mm -hmm. uh, maybe that should be the tagline that we use. Yeah. To recruit entrepreneurs, I I was talking last night to an entrepreneur in Boston 
And I literally said that. I, he said, well, I'm thinking about maybe going to Northern California. And I said, don't uh, don't make that decision before you come check this out because it is just nicer here. Well, it's, it's, it's funny. So I got in trouble for saying this on stage before once. Uh, I never said it on an interview on the record before. But um, Silicon Valley is where startups go to die. Mm-hmm. It's where scale-ups go to grow mm-hmm. and startups go to die. Because you go up there with your team of five amazing people, you know, and within six months, because you didn't get your funding, your CTO works for Google, your, your head of UX works for, for Facebook, and your head of sales now works at Salesforce because they got offered three four $400,000 and your company has raised three four $400,000. So mm-hmm. it's like you go up there when you're at the stage where you're not going up with your dream team and you only have a runway of six to nine months. You go up there when you've already raised those millions and you're going up there to find customers and clients and plug in because there's no better concentration in terms of uh, the big tech giants of the world for you to offer your services and vice versa, plug in with them, but build it here. There's no reason not to. I I totally agree. So uh, that that transitions to a great point. So one of the groups that I've been uh, getting more involved with here is called the CEO Leadership Alliance of Orange County. And uh, it's been, really encouraging because to me we now have a number of the biggest company and several that you mentioned earlier ceos Mm -hmm. gathering together to really orient toward how do we need to uh, be a a better innovation economy as a total community and you know one of their taglines is a thriving orange county for all and you know Mm -hmm. some of this is about lifting other people up but one of the things that we've talked about and you just mentioned this is we have great companies here. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the startup community. And therefore, if I'm an early stage startup, and I had this conversation earlier this week with the founder who said, it's easier for me to get a meeting with Walmart than it is to get a meeting with an Orange County enterprise <laughs> company. And you just mentioned some of these tech giants up in the Valley. Why can't those early customers be here? Why can't, you know, how do we convince the Orange County legacy companies there are some great ones how do we convince them to embrace the innovation that is getting started here to to really participate with that in a more meaningful way you know um that's a very good question and it's not one that has like that simple answer um but at the end of the day these companies um think of it think of it who's running a 500 million dollar company in orange county right now Chances are they started that company, what, 10 years ago? Mm-hmm. 10 years ago, there was no startup community here. Yes. Um, there, I mean, I shouldn't say that, actually. There was because you had, you had the events, you had the programming. Um, and like I said, like Octane's been at it for a very long time, and they've done an incredible job. But in the sense that if you were the CEO of that company starting that business, you, never, you didn't get to plug into these resources. They weren't easy to find. Mm-hmm. Um, so often when you're, when you're in that role and you're running a company, you forget about the world around you, and you just assume nothing else is changing, only your business is. Um, so it's tough. It's, it's how do you get those people out to the programming? How do you get them to mm-hmm. these uh, these events? And how do you make them see that you're 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 different? And the idea is you don't go to them saying, "Oh, we're another local company that you should work with." You go to them saying, "Hey, we're one of the best providers of this solution, and we know you need it." Yeah, and we happen to be here in your backyard. Oh yeah. So you can you can come see us if you need to. But, but that's the next question yeah. the CEO has: Where are you based? Like, where am I going to be able to get tech support? Where am I going to yes. be able to get help? Oh well, actually, we have an office down the street from you, and it's it's so funny. Like they they won't want to buy from you because you're an Orange County company, but they'll want to buy from you because you have an Orange County office. I mean, it might be your headquarters, but they don't have to know that. Just want to they want to know your Orange County office, so that way they know that oh, our market matters to you and our business matters to you. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to push a little harder and say. In really, really, and I, this is going to transition to, I want to talk a little bit about Toronto. But I'm, I'm pushing harder and saying, we need to convince people here that they should be unfairly advantaging entrepreneurs here. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that does happen in other communities. It does. And I've seen it. And that builds this sense of community connectedness and community pride. And, and we need that. We have, it exists here, but we need to bring it out and make it more visible. So that, you know, transition to Toronto where I would say, I bet that happens there. And, yeah. you know, what what should we be learning? You're spending a lot more of your time there now and, and have duplicated um, some of the Eureka uh, campus up there, among other things. But what, what should we be learning from what you're seeing happening in a place like Toronto? 
Sure. So uh, Toronto is a, a very like a different different place. It's kind of like uh, I often I often say Toronto is the what New York is as if New York and London had a kid. Mm. That's how you kind of feel when you're there in terms of the space. But the way the way the way to understand there, and you're absolutely right because this is exactly what they've been doing. They have that pride. And then they, they, they want to help the other companies and they form those groups and they, they plug in. But there, you know, you're dealing with the fastest growing tech job market in the world. I mean, if you mm-hmm. add up all the jobs that were created in Silicon Valley, Seattle, and D.C., I think last year, Toronto had more. And it's like one of those places that you have um, the large companies that realized, okay, I don't want to go up to Silicon Valley and build it there. I'm going to build it here. So that's why mm-hmm. you have companies like Shopify, Desire to Learn, um, and a number of other major players that uh, have plugged in. But what, what Orange County needs to do more of that Toronto has done incredibly well at is how do you get the bigger companies, the Microsofts, the Googles, the um, uh, Facebooks of the world to want to open up offices here? Because and we have many of those. We do, but they're all sales offices. And they're not, they're not community participants, and right? I, yeah, and I think that, I mean, th- and that may be something that CLA needs to take up is to say, w- let's go to their headquarters and let's say, we know you have 100 people or 500 people or in Amazon's case, several mm-hmm. thousand people in our community. We want you to participate in the community. Yeah, that, and that's a great way of approaching it because I know like the Google campus is – just down the street from us, right at mm-hmm. um, uh, near Park Place, and um, you have you have those companies, but I think that's a better way of putting it. They're not participating because yes. they don't see the value. But the reason why I say this is important, it's not like oh great, we want more big companies here competing for for talent and making our lives more difficult. It's that they're developing the talent for for the the community. In other words, yes. From so we we have a VC side, right? And I will be honest when I see. Uh, a deck come in and I look at the team of the people who are on there and I see an ex-Googler, an ex-Facebooker, an ex-even uh, Yahoo or whatever you want to like, and it's not, not, not it's spoke on now. But yeah, you have these companies and you have this experience. It's great because then you went through their engine of talent um, creation and talent development and they woke up one day and said, well, I'm kind of done doing this. I'm going to go take it on, on my own. And that's what happened in Silicon Valley. You had all these mm-hmm. big companies like Sun Microsystem. And the, they woke up one day and they said, you know what? I'm ready to do this on my own. Yes. And if we get more and more of that happening here, then it's going to be an incredible thing because people love living here. Um, That's right. That, we have that advantage, of, certainly over Toronto. But I, still, I still remember, uh, I, still remember um, I was chatting with uh, Brendan, who is the, the CEO and co-founder of Oculus. Yes. And when I asked him, because they're building the company here in Orange County, like, what – What's, what, what have you had, like, the biggest challenge? He says, hiring. And I said, well, what was the challenge about hiring? It's like, well, it's been really hard for us to find junior talent, like great talent in terms of junior developers, junior, junior people. He said, but I've never had an easier time in a company getting senior talent or mid-level talent mm-hmm. because they are usually in their 30s and 40s, they're married, and they have kids, and when they ask their uh, – they ask uh, their wife, hey, do you want to move down to Southern California where it's sunny all the time and warm? Mm-hmm. And also, like, you have this great lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. It's, it makes it so much easier for them to make the move. And mm-hmm. even one of my friends just moved down now. Um, he's at Blizzard. And he left. He was at, uh, he was at an L.A. He was at Scopely in L.A. And then he was at Zynga in, uh, in the Valley. And he came down to Orange County. He's like, I'm never leaving this place. Yes. And he just, it's, it's, it's got that cachet. It's just a matter of, okay, great. Let's get some of the big companies in here to j- develop the talent for us so we yes. have – the nonstop flow into our ecosystem. So any anything in Toronto, it's a great point. So anything you're seeing in Toronto, because that, that's been a consistent theme, even for the bigger companies. What, what I've seen is that the ones that are here, there isn't a strong commitment and desire to developing that talent. And mm-hmm. so if you're coming out of Cal State Fullerton or UCI, in many cases they're leaving because they see opportunities to be developed elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the fear and what we've seen is that in many cases if they leave, they don't come back. Mm-hmm. And maybe they come back, you know, 15, 20 years later. But we need that pipeline all throughout. So do you see in Toronto anywhere where they're investing in that, like as a community, maybe outside the companies, are they investing in that junior talent so that there is, it, it feels less risky to the startup companies to bring that person in? I mean, I've, I've hired interns prolifically throughout my mm-hmm. career to do, and some of it is I, I think you get a great advantage by and committing and investing in talent 
But I don't see that as a consistent theme here because people either don't feel like they, they're going to get the return on investment, they don't know how to do it. So do you see anything in Toronto that we could we could maybe emulate? Sure. And there's definitely, I mean, there's always, there's always things to learn from all, all markets and what works and what doesn't. And, um, you know, one of the things is you got to get, get more of the institutions and the public side of things mm -hmm. involved and plugged in. Um, not many people know this, but Toronto is actually home to the largest incubator in the world, uh, called Mars. It's, it's, um, crazy development in terms of the amount of square footage that they have and the companies that come out of it. But it was all funded by a partnership, like a partnership with the government, uh, major banks and financial institutions mm. that call Toronto home and other organizations that put the money in and put the capital in to create it. And now it's a sustainable product. Mm. Now it actually uh, covers its costs and, um, and, and works that way. And that's one of the things we, 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 I wanted to try and do here was, okay, how do we get the city, the county, the, whatever, that, whatever yes. that organization is, plug into it. And I, and I have to say that one of, the, one of the most positive things I've seen about Orange County that makes me really excited is when I see things like what Richard Sudek did with UCI, Applied yes. Innovation, in terms of creating, creating that space within an institution, mm -hmm. yes. which I gotta tell you, um, is not easy, right? Was, because yeah, Herculean effort. It, it, yes. Exactly, I mean, anytime you have, you have a, uh, you're, you're trying to not only create something new, but create something new that needs a lot of capital and needs a lot of capital from a very bureaucratic organization it's it was wonderful to see it come come to life mm -hmm. and i think that's such a huge uh call it um pillar of this tech community mm -hmm. here in orange county mm -hmm. but what it comes down to is okay how do we now how do we get the the organizations here that um are the foundation of what orange county is to participate and invest that's right so last question for me, and then we're going to do an accelerate OC first and uh, allow the live audience questions uh -oh. and, and, you know, another experiment here. Uh, so what areas, as you think about Orange County, what areas in technology do you think we should be leading in or leaning on over the next decade and saying th these are the flags we should be planting and really trying to uh, build upon or, or establish as on a global stage? Mm-hmm. So that's a great question. Um, when I first moved here, you, know, you had uh, you had this heritage in Orange County of aerospace, mm -hmm. and I often likened the fact to why uh, Sale, which was a clean tech VC, was based here, was because you had all these incredible aerospace engineers who then left these big companies and they started businesses using their hard science skills that were like energy related, water related, and and so on and so forth. Um, and you still have that here. I, I look at it like, okay, what are some of the big companies that have come out of Orange County? Mm -hmm. And if I look at the players that are, um, have, have succeeded in the space, a lot of them are hardware companies, mm -hmm. a lot of them are consumer product companies, um, and a lot of them are um, uh, B2B software companies, right? You know, Quest Software was a, was a, was a great example, bought by Dell. You have companies like um, Oculus and uh, uh, even 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 at car companies, right, like Fisker and, and now Rivian, which I think to date has raised two billion dollars and calls Orange County home. Um, you have you have this great talent at building real things, and it's one of those one of those one of those markets that I know a lot of VCs for a long time didn't like because it's a lot harder to make make a physical product, put it in a box, and ship it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a longer hockey stick. But it's also just a, a great marketplace to take over and then saying, you know, my software, download it and work it. But um, I think there's a lot of a lot of talent around that. I think there's a lot of talent around um, the, the gaming and creator space. And I think there's a lot of talent around uh, the B2B software space. So that's where I would say, like, that those are the companies that have an advantage being in Orange County. You know, if you're a fintech company, does that mean you shouldn't do it here? No, keep doing it here. But I can tell you a fintech company that's based in London, New York, or Toronto is going to have a slight advantage because they're going to have trillions of dollars worth of banks with headquarters within a mile of their office. Whereas here, you know, what, what do you have that access to? You have access to the people who built billion dollar companies in that space. You have access to, uh, a, I think, a ton of mid-size and large cap yes. companies that are going to be able to buy your software. And then you have one of the largest, uh, call it, marketplaces uh, for people to 
buy your product and test your product. So um, we've been doing a lot more on the consumer product space, mm -hmm. uh, and it's because we've always liked hardware and we've always liked those different pieces. So it's it's one of those things that it also has the biggest economic imp economic impact because again, it may it may take ten people to make this, whereas it only takes one software uh, engineer to create a million products. Mm -hmm. So right. you're actually creating more jobs as well if that's a if that's a focus of yours. That's very yeah, great great insight. Uh, I, I actually had uh, one of the co-founders of Just Food for Dogs oh, yeah, in company. here yesterday, yeah. and they they started right here in Newport Beach, and so they're and they're doing great and uh, they're making stuff. Their logo was like literally a picture of the owner's dog, right? Yes, uh, that was the inspiration like, for for talk the company. About authenticity, right? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for, for that. Uh, I'm going to open it up for a couple questions. Who uh, Anybody have a question for Peter? Just one comment. SAP is in market, right? They got the Honda house and they've got some development going on there. So there is some uh, recognition of Orange County as an opportunity to be a bigger uh, dog tech company. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you know, Sc Scott was mentioning you know, SAP being here, I think, is a, is a great um sort of feather in, in Orange County's cap of, sure. of a company who's obviously a very global company. And I think we know on the enterprise software side, uh, we've got presence from every major enterprise software company here. Uh, maybe in most cases it might be a sales office, mm -hmm. but uh, we I think it's something to build upon. Oh, I completely agree. And I didn't mean it in a negative way. I mean, yes. like we need to, to, to get them plugged in more. And the other piece, sorry, it was also cybersecurity is a big thing here. Yes. Um, I, I mean, if you've been down the Irvine spectrum, there's a, one of the tallest new buildings there has BlackBerry on the side of it because they bought a company here in Orange County that was in the cybersecurity right. space. That's right. Which, you know, as a, as a Canadian, I crack up every time I see the BlackBerry logo in Irvine, California. Which yes, makes me, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. Well, well, Peter, you know, last thing, uh, I always ask my guests to share kind of a final piece of advice or, or words of wisdom with the audience. So what, what would be sort of a, a piece of advice that you'd love to share with aspiring on Orange County entrepreneurs, um, having been one yourself with, with Eureka and, and, you know, an active investor? Sure. Um, well, the piece of advice I give to any of the companies we invest in and work with is uh, the most dangerous thing to any company is not running out of money. It's not uh, losing customers. It's not um, comp comp competitors. It is your own ego. Mm. And I have seen people's egos, CEOs' egos, founders' egos, completely derail what should have been incredibly successful businesses because it causes you to stop listening to everyone else around you and start thinking that you know better than anyone else as well. So I always tell people that ego is the bullet that kills a successful business. And so always make sure that that ego is in check. And whatever you need to do in terms of asking third parties, third party validation is great on this, yeah. <laughs> is, you know, check your own ego and have someone else check it for you. That's, that's great advice. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to have a, a wife of 20 years who is particularly good at keeping my ego in <laughs> check. <laughs> ego but, checking since before time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, Peter, thank you so much for, for joining me. us today and, and, you know, taking us on a, on a ride and sharing your perspective and your experience. And, and thank you for being a trailblazer here. You were uh, ahead of your time. You know, often, as they say, pioneers can get shot, but it's, you know, it's so great that Eureka has been so successful. And, you know, my only request is, in 2020 and beyond, you know, spend more time down here and yeah. uh, let's do some more, uh, you know, cross-border commerce between Orange County and, and Canadian companies. Oh, absolutely. And it, uh, uh, trust me, it's it's more so there's just uh, been doing more projects there lately. So it's uh, it's not like uh, I picked one over the other. That's not the case. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah.